according to the laws of relativity. The presence of mass curves spacetime. But, what does this curvature mean? It means that, time passes slower near a celestial body, than it does far away from it. The slower passing of time near the body, directly associates to its gravitational attraction. At the scale of a planet, this lapse in time is too little to measure by conventional clocks. But near a black hole the difference is huge. As time almost reaches a halt. All that is known. But if time moves faster the further away from a black hole, what holds it far larger distance away, like, as we reach the far outer universe. Does time keep moving faster and faster there? Or does it reach a flat value? The new model explains how time actually turns out to move slower toward the very distant outer universe. As a part of a specific loop gravity effect, That inclination forces distant stars away, for same reason it attracts stars toward a black hole. The outward inclination, results to the observed accelerated expansion of the universe. Is inertia a conventional force? Does it belong to one of nature's four interactions? If action exactly equals reaction, shouldn't a pushed particle stand still? According to the new model, the time curve has two nodal points, where time halts. Beyond which points, time is predicted to take negative values. If that holds for time curvature, should it be same for space curvature? Existing quantitative analysis predicts a specific surface outside a black hole. At either side of this surface, interactions point in opposite directions. The new theory interprets this place as a space node. In this way, the time and space curvatures are subject to a phase shift between them. This inductive-like shift is explained to concern the Higgs field. This stresses matter with mass. The shift affects inertia in similar way to as a voltage current phase shift causes impedance. Due to this shift, only the real coordinate of energy does work in accelerating an object. The imaginary coordinate causes an inefficiency that we perceive as inertia. In that sense, this shift angle is responsible for causing the inertial behavior of matter. In electronics, power equals the product of voltage times current. A phase shift may cause the power curve to exhibit large positive and small negative parts. It similarly applies with the energy product of space and time curvatures. Antimatter refers to negative time, as per the feynman stuckelberg interpretation. The small negative area, signifies existence of less antimatter, than matter in the universe. The larger positive area, signifies existence of more matter, than antimatter in the universe. 
regions of negative space, associate to properties of exotic particles, like neutrinos. The positive or negative combinations of time and space, allow for the existence of four cosmic regions. Each one of these four cosmic regions, is stable habitat for different particles. Conventional matter, is stable in our positive cosmic region. This also predicts that time travel to negative metrics is not feasible, as we would disintegrate. In electronics, a voltage current shift, involves a delay in time. In mechanics, a time-space shift, involves a displacement in space. In electronics, the crossing of charge through the plates of a capacitor, comes along with a lead in time. In mechanics, Barrier penetration is explained to concern tunneling, having the form of a lead in space. Both such leads, follow similar principles with frustrated total internal reflection. In electronics, the local density of magnetic field lines concerns a magnetic potential. In mechanics, a symmetric condition is explained to cause the Bernoulli pressure. In electronics, Lenz law induces a loop-like flow of charge. In mechanics, a symmetric interaction causes loop flow of matter. Like in the whirling of water. The time-space shift, is shown to match the Weinberg angle of the electroweak interaction. This reveals a new symmetry, between the electric and the gravitational interactions. Referring to a very particular swapping, between the curvatures of time, and inverse space. This has direct implications, on the theory of the electroweak interaction. If the radial-like, gravitational field, concerns the curvature of spacetime, shouldn't the radial-like, electric field, concern an analogous curvature, spacetime related? Is there an end, to a gravitational field line? Is it infinitely long? Does it dim out, and disappear? Could it pass through a node, and turn negative? Could it turn imaginary? Could the time-space shift of 30 degrees, result into a portion of a field line becoming imaginary? Could what we perceive as real reaction, arise through the interaction of two imaginary terms, since I squared equals minus one? How can it be feasible for photon entanglement to be affected instantaneously, which is far faster than the speed of light? Could that concern a reaction effect, accounted for, via imaginary terms? Could imaginary terms, account for an actual another half of physics? Could the time-space shift of 30 degrees, which is one-third of 90 degrees, relate in some way to the value, of a quark's charge being one-third or two-thirds of an electron's charge? Could imaginary field portions, provide an alternative to the need for the existence of dark matter? Can there really be, a new way to interpret equations imaginary terms? Could the cause of an elementary particle spin one-half, have any sort of relation to the time-space shift of 30 degrees? Considering that for an imaginary coordinate, it holds that the sine of 30 degrees equals one-half? 
An electric battery is considered to be powered by the electromotive force. But, doesn't that force have a reaction character? Could the battery actually be powered by a comparable process of enhancing character? Likewise, could an anti-symmetric form of interaction yield an enhancing potential, driving exergonic reactions which power life? Consider two rocket ships traveling side by side, near light speed. Crew 1, ages slower than people on Earth. Crew 1, concurrently, ages same as Crew 2. Doesn't that concern, coexistence of more than one dimensions of time, for Crew 1? Is it okay, to assume only one dimension of time?